Um, okay, so uh, I want to get to the stuff, the training stuff for you guys. This is why we're working down here instead of sitting in my office. <laughs> I'll get back to sitting in my ass next week. Don't worry. But this week I figured uh, it was time to give you guys some uh, stuff that you can really sink your teeth into. So I'm going to hit four different categories here. We're going to do in Engagement. I've talked a lot about my engagement. If you guys have taken classes from me, whether live or in person or virtual, you've seen me talk about engagement a lot. I'm going to just give a quick rundown of that for some of you guys that maybe haven't seen it. And then we're going to lead into uh, a very important concept, which is a master key in my training system called variant energy. We're going to talk about uh, another cool piece called auto sits. And then we're going to talk about another fun game called uh, Find My Face, which will lead into auto watches. So we're going to talk about those four things today. And then after I buzz through those, uh, we will get to some of the live Q&A stuff and I'll be able to answer your questions as we go. So uh, let's hit it, guys. OK, so first one, we're going to be talking about engagement. Uh, and so engagement is probably the very first foundational piece that I think everybody should do with their dog when they start working with their dog. So this is something that you would obviously do with a new dog. If you had a puppy, this is the, some of the very first training stuff you would do with a new puppy. If you adopted a new dog from the shelter, this is the very first thing you would do. And whenever I start working with a new dog that comes into my studio here, the first thing I do is engagement stuff. Uh, I just want to teach the dog how to work with me. I want to teach the dog my communication system. I want to start building some of the foundational skills and that's going to move all of my other training a lot faster. And even like in my live and the virtual basic classes, like it's the very first thing. In fact, I send a video out to everybody that takes a class and they have to practice it even before class starts. And those of you guys on the Patreon got our introductory video just, you know, to watch and comment on. Uh, so you can see some of that stuff there for free. Um, so let me get, just give you a real quick rundown of how the engagement works. Uh, like I said, for those of you guys that might be like, what the heck is this engagement stuff? What is he talking about? So the way the engagement works is uh, a few pieces. So one is you want a, a neutral area to work, relatively distraction-free. Of course, I'm working in my studio here. You could be in your living room, uh, in a family room. You could be in a garage. If you feel like you have a relatively secluded yard, you know, without too many squirrels or neighbor dogs or anything that might tear your dog's attention away right now, you can do this. Uh, and here's a few of the secrets. So one is, is we need to have a consistent communication system. Uh, those of you guys that have followed my work know that I use markers, specifically yes and good. Markers are just a laser beam to pinpoint precise moments in time when I get what I want from the dog. Uh, the other thing is our food handling. I'm going to run through that really, really quick here. I've got my treat bag on my on my butt here. So well, what we do is we take our hand and right about on the second joint about we just set the food there. You don't don't stick it between your fingers. This You're not palming a quarter. Just drop it there in the joint and then you trap it with your thumb and then you kind of cup your hand slightly. Now this makes it so that the dog can't get the food until you move your thumb, right? That also allows you to manipulate the food and hold it upside down. You can do underhand presentations. You can do overhand presentations. Uh, you can manipulate the food and handle it in a lot of different ways and that's important. The other thing that this does is it creates a big target for the dog as they access their food. So a lot of trainers will teach targeting as a separate skill. Uh, and I'm like, that's that's a waste of time. Like, don't make it a separate thing. Here, let's turn this. There we go. Don't make it a separate thing. Just integrate it into what you're doing. So for example, uh, I'm going to do this with Wednesday here real quick. She's down here <laughs> waiting to work. Come here, baby girl. So when she moves, I just present and she comes into it. There we go. Good girl. If I present food that way every time, zip, and the dog comes to get the food there, I'm teaching the dog how to target my hand without making it a separate thing. I'm just integrating it into what I do. So I'm streamlining the process. It's just working faster, right? So your communication, I use yes and good. Yes is my end marker. Good is my duration marker. 
You guys can use whatever you want. I don't live with you. Just be consistent. Everybody in the house needs to use the same words in the same way. So markers, food handling, targeting. Here's how the engagement stuff works. Okay, so here's how the engagement game works. I'm going to move around the space and I'm not going to say anything. I don't want to request or try to coax the dog. I need for the dog to become an active participant in their own learning, to become an active learner. And so I'm not going to just keep nagging them to do stuff like, hey, you, hey, you, hey, you, hey, you, hey, you, pay attention to me, pay attention to me. Oh, God, please, 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 please pay attention to me. Like it gets pathetic after a while. So I'm going to move about the space when the dog kind of like, what are you doing? Right. A lot of dogs will see their owner moving around and just take a step. On that very first step, when you start to see them commit to it, you mark that, yes, and present, and then the dog comes to get the food. Now, this is a whole separate thing, but uh, you guys that have seen how I work, you know that I'm really big about having a dog move into their food. So I present, and the dog comes, gets it. A lot of training systems push food at the dog. Like, you know, so we're like, hey, dog, sit, push the food at the dog. I don't do that. The dog always does some kind of movement to access their food. Even if I have the food, you know, like if I go down, they don't necessarily have to get up for it, but they're going to have to, I'm going to go, yes, and they have to stretch out their neck to get it. So the dog is always accessing the food on their own instead of me just like shoving it at them. Uh, that really works with a dog's <laughs> instinctual programming. Okay. So I'm just going to move about the space here. And I'm going to do a few of these and I want you to see how Wednesday works and what we're looking for. Now, she's really fluent with this, but with a new dog, we want to see their speed increase over time. We want to see their accuracy and targeting increase over time. We want to see their prolonged engagement over time. I don't want a dog to just tune out. I want them to stay focused and be like, hey, what are we doing? This is great. This is awesome. So I'm just going to move. <laughs> yes. Good girl, sweetheart. Good job. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Great job, sweetheart. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Good job. Yes. Good job. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Zip. Ooh, get, 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 get. Good girl. <laughs> Good girl, good girl. Now she's really fluent with this exercise. So, you know, when I do this with her, she's already like, yeah, yeah, man. And you see how as soon as she accesses a reward, she immediately turns around and is ready for the next run. That's really what I'm looking for is I'm looking for some prolonged engagement in the dog. And they're like, hey, man, let's keep working together. I like this. For a new dog, this could take a couple of days to build that kind of speed and enthusiasm. And if I work with my Jack Russell, Darwin, like he's three times the speed she is. I mean, he just, he just hits me like a torpedo. And I mean, I don't even have time to grab the next piece of food before he's like, what's next? Um, and that's the kind of pushy enthusiasm I want when I'm working with a dog. I think that that's super, super, super powerful stuff. So that's just the engagement piece right there. That's a whole exercise unto itself. If you guys were like, hey, I don't want to watch anymore and bailed out and all you did was the engagement stuff, like you would start to see things move a little faster, right? But I'm also teaching the dog all the important pieces that we use to train. So if I'm doing sit, down, stay, come, take it, drop it, leave it, loose leash walking, you know, heel, finish, spin, shake, high five, like all of these things use these tools that I'm teaching here. So the communication, the food handling, the targeting. All of that is taught here. So this right here, this work and engagement, this is like 101. This is the classroom already, you know, and the better a dog gets at this system, the faster all my other training works. So you could just do some engagement, right? I'm just going to move around. Yes. Girl. Yes. And I'm not asking for anything. She's choosing. Yes. To engage with me. The girl. Yes. The girl. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. Good job. 
So you'll notice also that I'm moving in straight lines. So the dog has to be able to target the hand. So you don't want to like present and then curve because it's harder for them to track. So, you know, I'll go straight back, girl. I might go to the side, yes, girl. However you wanna do it, left, right, straight back. You wanna do it underhand or overhand. However you do it, move in a straight line so it's really easy for the dog to track. So that's just the engagement game right there. Seriously, if you're having trouble with your dog paying attention or being invested in training, you know, if you grab a few treats and you're like, hey, let's work on a few things. If you do this stuff and work up to your training and even use this as a warm up into a training session, you know, like if I bring her downstairs and I'm like, hey, let's work on, you know, some other important complicated kind of maneuver. I do this for the first 30 to 60 seconds just to get her into the game. Like, oh, okay, yeah, we're training right now. We're doing that. Okay. So that's engagement. Uh, that's, I think a foundational piece right there. Um, uh, and, and that's one of my favorite things to do with everybody. So the second thing I'm going to teach you guys about today, I feel like I've already thrown a lot at you. <laughs> so make sure you drop some comments if you have some questions about this. So the second thing I want to teach you guys about today is uh, a concept that I've kind of taken from several other trainers way better than me in the world. Uh, and then I've adapted it and made it my own, which is kind of how I've done everything in my life. So this is the concept of variant energy. And the way variant energy works is that you can communicate a lot to a dog about what you want or don't like with the energy that you present with your body. So dogs are all about reading body language uh, and decoding movement and things like that. That's one of the main ways that dogs communicate with each other. Well, the main way that humans communicate with each other is with our mouths, with our words and sentences. And the human brain is... It, the pre-installed software is designed for language. That's not the case with a dog, right? Teaching a dog commands is all about just basically teaching them to memorize sounds. That's an important part of training, but don't get too hung up on that in the early stages. Use your energy and your body language to communicate with the dog. So basically, it, it kind of works like this. My concept of variant energy works like this. If I am getting what I want from a dog, we are moving. There's some energy, we're upbeat, we're peppy, we're having a fun time, we're invested in the process. Uh, if I am not getting what I want, you know, maybe like I'm waiting for them to work on this. And remember I talk about getting the dog to participate in their own learning. I want to engage them as an active learner and start working through training problems on their own, okay? So one of the ways we do that is uh, at some point, I'll just get to where I deactivate. I'll just shut down, I'll go flat, I'll go neutral. It's like I'm a wall of ice. So the key phrase in this is to deactivate while you wait. I'm actually gonna create a banner for that. Deactivate while you wait. So that's the key phrase with variant energy is to deactivate while you wait, okay? So what we do then is I'll just kind of zip, stop moving, quiet my body, quiet my voice, and just hang out and wait. Now, if I've set things up and I've built enough reps where the dog can go like, dude, what happened? Why'd you shut off? Uh, okay, w what should I do? Then we get the dog to start figuring out how to hit the on switch. And on switch training is really big. I have a poster, it's all right there, about on switch. <laughs> It's on the back of my hoodie, right? This is a big piece of what I do is teaching a dog to hit the on switch so that they learn how to reactivate me with their behavior, right? So we show these dogs that behavior has function, that their behavior makes things happen in their life. So then the dog gets gives me what I want and I pop, I reactivate into life. I use my marker word. I'm like, yes, that's it. That's what I wanted. And they're like, oh my God, that's really cool. I, I did that. I did that. I made you do that. That's really cool. Um, and I think that that's a really cool thing to use uh, in your arsenal. Now you can introduce it. I'm going to show you how to do this in the next exercise we're going to do. But 
You can even use this in your treatment for your annoying behaviors, right? So if you have a dog that jumps a lot, now there are several things you can do. You can teach a dog to get off. You can do the shedding where you turn or step back and all that stuff. But the key in it is to use your variant energy. So the dog is jumping because they want attention. You know, you shut down and deactivate. Don't get reactive and confrontational because you're just putting gasoline on the fire. Shut down, deactivate, use that variant energy and just vip. And then when you shed the dog, if you turn your body or step back, it's completely without any affect at all. It's emotionless, it's robotic, you're just that wall of ice. Then the feet hit the ground and you get that second the dog is like, well, what now? You go, yes, thank you. I like it when you have all four feet on the ground. That's how you get the attention. That's how you get what you want, right? 10 or 12 of those in the row and you're gonna see the dog start going like, yeah, jumping doesn't really, doesn't really get what I want. If I just kind of sit here and wiggle my butt in front of you, like, it's pretty awesome. So we communicate a lot with that variant energy. Okay, so let's take that concept of variant energy and let's shove that into the next piece, which is auto sits, okay? So once I have a dog that's really good with their engagement, they're following me, we have some prolonged engagement, they're kind of pushy, they want to keep re-engaging on their own, they're fluent in the yes, they're fluent in the targeting, uh, and I've taught sit, as a separate thing, right? So this is the point where we've done our engagement, your dog is already kind of uh, a couple, three weeks into training, like their sits are pretty good. You know, if, if you use your hand signal, they're like, oh yeah, okay, I know what a sit means. And so now we're going to start introducing auto sits. And so here's how the auto sit works. We do our engagement, you get the dog, yeah, yeah, they're moving, they're targeting, they're taking the food. And then at some point we just, shut down and deactivate. And I want the dog to be like, dude, what the hell? Why'd you stop? Uh, uh, how do I get this? How do I get this person to come back on, right? How do they get them to come back on? Put their butt on the ground. So you see here, don't ask for the sit. Let them become an active participant in their learning and understand that a sit reactivates people. A sit is an on button. So then we get a dog that, we move, we move, we move, we stop and freeze, and then the dog goes bip and sits, and that's how they turn you back on, okay? Now, I'm gonna do this with Wednesday, and then I'm gonna talk about some accommodations you can make for a, a new dog that might be new to this game, okay? So I'm gonna start off with just a couple of engagements, and she's, we've done this a million times, so she's gonna just do it right away, And you, but you'll kinda see, watch my energy, how I shut down, her bottom hits the ground, and then I mark that and reactivate, okay? So she feels like she has some control over me, right? Yes, good girl. Good girl. Yes, good girl. Good girl. Yes, good girl, honey. <laughs> good job, sweetheart. That's it. That's it. Yes. <laughs> good girl, sweetheart. Good girl, baby. Good girl. You know I love those bottoms on the ground. Yes. <laughs> good girl, baby girl. Yes. Good girl. Good girl. Yes. <laughs> Good girl, sweetheart. Good girl. Good girl. So you can see the auto sit there. Oh, maybe I had the damn auto sit thing in there. Let's do a few more so we can do it without the banner in the way. Yes. Good girl, sweetheart. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Good girl, baby girl. Good girl. <laughs> beautiful, sweetheart. Beautiful. That's such a good girl. That's such a good girl. Look at this little wiggly bottom. Look at this little wiggly bottom. <laughs> good girl, sweetheart. Good girl. So one other thing to notice about this is you notice that I didn't have the food out. So it's really important that in training in general, even though we use food, we have to establish the idea that food is not promised or guaranteed, that the dog, <laughs> remember, Behavior has 
function. You make the good things happen. You make the rewards appear with your behavior. So I just deactivate and I hang out and then she puts her bottom on the ground. I say, yes, I pop into life and then I pull the food out beep, and I target it. Here you go, honey. <laughs> so, you know, part of your practice also is to be getting good with your food handling so you can reach in and get it and it's already in the right position. Uh, you know, I also usually in the winter time, I really just put food in my pockets and pull it out that way. But I hope you can see how this really starts to teach a dog some really cool skills. And so if you get really good at the auto sit, then you're teaching a dog that there's never a wrong time to sit, right? I want a dog that just like, well, sits are kind of how I feel air pockets in my brain, right? So, uh, you know, this is so hardwired into some of my dogs that if I'm there in the middle of the living room and they're just like, do, 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 and I walk in the room, I'm like, hey, sweetheart, what are you doing? And I start to approach them and my intent is just to pet them and tell them I love them. Like they just sit, they see me coming and then they just sit, they square up and they sit. That's a rad <laughs> habit to have. Like, it's freaking amazing. Uh, you know, if you see me coming with a leash, sit. You want to go out this door, sit. I'm preparing some food for you, sit. Uh, we're going to meet somebody, sit. Somebody asked to pet you, sit. Uh, we're waiting to cross the street, sit. You don't know what you're supposed to do, sit. Uh, it's just an awesome kind of thing. And this is where it starts with the auto sit. Now, I said one accommodation that you can make real quickly with the dog is uh you remember i said don't ask for the sit just deactivate now some dogs that are new to this kind of thing that aren't used to uh you know working through problems maybe they don't have the confidence yet maybe they have low frustration tolerance you can kind of give them helpers like that's okay okay and this is why it's important that your dog already knows sit in the in a completely separate context with a request so you know i've worked with dogs uh that have come in we've done some engagement uh, and then I'm like, okay, let's do some auto sits. And so I'll just, ch -ch 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 -ch, and then deactivate while I wait. And the dog will come up and they'll be like, what the, uh, and you can see they're just like complete, <laughs> they're like blue screen, like, uh, what, what happened? And so I'll kind of just, it's almost like a question. I'll be like, sit, you know, and then I'll go, okay. And they'll do it. And I'm like, yes, that's good job, you know? And so you see that variant energy. It's very, very neutral. Sit. And then they are sit. And I go, boom, great job. And they're like, oh, my God, that's awesome. Usually, it never takes more than about four or five before they start doing it on their own. And then they're like, oh, snap. All I got to do is sit in front of you. And it, re it reactivates you. So auto sits are a wonderful wonderful exercise that you can do with your dog uh, as part of your engagement um, and i just like to do some ambush training with it uh you know i'm just walking through the house and i'll be like oh you're such a good puppy you're such a good puppy and then i'll just dit, 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 and stop and i want them to be like oh yeah right come up and square up and sit and i'm like that's it oh my god you're such a good dog and then i'm just really cementing that in hard so uh auto sits there you go so let's get the last one here and then I'll field some of your questions uh, and we'll move on. So the last piece of this is, is just a fun, fun game that you can do uh, is find my face. And so the way find my face works is it incorporates all of these other pieces here. So we're doing the engagement, uh, the marker training, the food handling and the targeting, the variant energy. So I just deactivate while I wait and then I reactivate as soon as I get what I want. And so the criteria here is not the sit, it's that they find my face, okay? So uh, you could ask for this. There's a lot of trainers that train, you know, like watch me's and look at that uh, and stuff. I find that if we can get the dog to do these voluntarily, if they become an active learner and they figure out that this is an on switch, this is an on button that they can activate, uh, then I find that it's deeper, deeper learning. It's much more long lasting and it's much more motivating for them to do it that way. So the way Find My Face works is we'll do this, this uh, exercise, the engagement stuff. And when I deactivate, I'll be facing away, right? So I'm gonna make it real easy in the early stages. I'm not gonna go 180 degrees. I might just go like 90 degrees. So they're looking at the side of me and the dog is gonna be like, well, dude, uh, what happened? 
All I want that dog to do is to move into my field of vision and be looking at my face, move into my field of vision, look at my face, and that's how I'm like, boom, that turns me back on, right? So as we work through this, I want that dog to start finding my face. And I'll get to where instead of 90 degrees, I'll go 180, and I want a dog to zip around, like find my face and look at me, and that's what turns me back on. So uh, that's a really cool exercise too. I'm gonna try it with Wednesday here. We actually haven't done this one for a long time. Uh, and I have a feeling that she might go into a heel position because for her, that's one of her big, big on switches is heel position. So if she gives me heel position, I'm actually going to take that because she's usually looking at me. Uh, and I don't, I don't want to miss an opportunity to keep that going. You know, I love that she thinks uh, heel position is just like one of the greatest places to be. Okay. So we're going to warm her up and then we'll try to see how it goes. Okay. All right. Don't make daddy look bad. You ready? Let's go. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. Yes. Good girl. <laughs> She's sitting too. She's like, well, wait a second. What are you supposed to do, honey? Yes, that was it, sweetie. Good girl. Good girl, honey. That was exactly what I wanted. <laughs> yes, that was fantastic. Yes, good girl, sweetheart. <laughs> good girl. Yes, good girl, honey. Great job. <laughs> good girl. Yes. Good girl, honey. Good girl. Now that time she came around and I waited to reactivate until she actually looked up at me and that's what turned me on. <laughs> Great job, sweetheart. Oh, I'm so proud of you, little mama. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> Good job. Let's do a heel. Let's do a heel. You ready? Come on, come on, come on, come on. Heel. Yes. Good girl, honey. Great job, honey. Great job. So uh, that's the find my face game uh, and it incorporates the things that we talked about, the, uh, the variant energy, the marker, I mean, all the pieces in there. And what was really interesting is we had just done auto sits together. So her first, her first uh, inclination was to do the auto sits. So she sat and she's like, dude, so I did kind of what I talked about with the auto sit. I made an accommodation. I'm like, okay, I know this is going to be, an unexpected left turn for you. So I kind of just do, 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 you know, and I'm like, what's a good girl supposed to do? And she's like, well, shit, I gotta, I gotta, I gotta figure this out. Came around that got it. And she's like, Oh, we're doing that now. Okay. All right. Okay. So that's a really, really cool game to play with your dog too. So let's just recap really quickly. Start with engagement. That's where you just, uh, reinforcing their commitment to stay engaged with you and active in the learning process. So you're just moving, talking, and targeting. You're teaching them the marker word, you're getting used to your food handling and your targeting, and you're getting them to move and engage with energy. Then you use your variant energy to start teaching them uh, what you want and don't want, whether you're in the training situation or you're working on an annoying behavior or something like that. And then we start introducing our auto sits in the engagement game to start teaching the dog that sits are just an ever present on button. Like there's never an, a bad time to sit. Sitting is just one of the most awesome things you can do in your life to make great things happen. And then you can introduce the find my face to just further strengthen your whole engagement and bonding piece right there and really create a dog that's not only interested and invested in their learning, but also uh, really interested and invested in you. Um, because you know, working with you makes awesome things in their life happen. So there you go, guys. Uh, those are the activities today. Uh, let's talk about it. Let's answer some of your questions. Uh Melody asked, how long should training sessions be? Uh, I've been a lazy human, a bad paw rinse and haven't trained her in a while. I'm going to try to put her training sessions back in my daily routine. You know, uh, I think more short sessions are much better than fewer longer ones. Uh, dogs tend to uh, 
even if they had the physical stamina to do it, it's the mental stimulation, you know? And so you take a lot of mental bandwidth when you do these high density exercises. So, you know, depending on the breed, I would say, you, uh, you know, like pumpkin, your dog, or, you know, like Wednesday, I like five minutes tops, like five minute blocks, and then give them a break. If you have a more active, like a working breed, you know, if you've got a shepherd or a springer or a pointer or a doby or a boxer or something like that, that's got much higher energy threshold, you know, you could do 10 minute sessions, but even then, you know, you're burning a lot of that uh, brain man bandwidth. And so I like to keep it short anyway, just to give them a chance to kind of decompress, catch your breath, get a drink of water, go potty, you know, grab a bone, lay down for five minutes, you know, whatever. Uh, so I think fewer short sessions are better. Uh, and then how many training sessions did you aim for? Uh, well, I know we're human. We're busy people. I'd say if you can get, listen, if you can only do one, one is better than none. If you got the time and the, and the, uh, opportunity, you know, two or three, five minute sessions per day is I think more than adequate for most pet dogs. Uh, Marlene, don't they get confused if you have so many on switches? Well, uh, initially, yes, yes. And so, you know, you see a lot of dogs that kind of what we call just buzz through the repertoire, you know, like, you know, I'll have these, these really good, like labs all the time. They'll come into a class and you go like, okay, sit. And then you try to go to something like a lay down or a stay or something like that. And they're like, okay, shake, high five, roll over, play dead, lay down, stay, stand up, you know? And they're, and you're like, whoa, whoa, he's off the gas pedal turbo. Like I don't, I don't need 15 different things from you. I only need one. So that dog has figured out that all of those things are on switches. But some of the deeper learning pieces is just, okay, to differentiate and learn what contexts those things are appropriate. Some things are going to be appropriate in any context. Some things are going to be like, okay, sweetheart, <laughs> I only want you to do these things in certain pieces. I mean, we do the same thing, you know, with kids. Uh, your boss does the same thing with you. Uh, you know, uh, it's just part of the learning process is to go into the deeper learning when things are appropriate. It doesn't mean that you've done something wrong. And if your dog is offering a bunch of on switches, I'm like, okay, listen, we're halfway there. You're starting to figure out how <laughs> to navigate the planet. Um, so yeah, initially there's going to be some stuff. And even Wednesday sometimes will, you know, um, we've boiled it down to only two or three of those, but you know, I, like I said, sometimes she'll go into a heel position when I wanted something else. I'm like, uh, okay, sweetheart. I, Thank you for doing that, but that's not what I needed right now. You know, and so we just are supportive and patient and just, you know, show them and maybe give them a little more information in that specific moment. Uh, have you worked with any dogs that do not seem to be interested in engagement even at an easy level? Mary asked, yes, uh, but you can cultivate it with those dogs. Typically, the reason that they are not interested in the engagement at even at an easy level is, I would say, 99% of the time, it's just uh, very low motivation for a couple of reasons. So one is generally fear. So fearful dogs really struggle with this stuff. Uh, fearful or dogs that have low confidence and stability in new social situations. You know, so some people will be like, yes, and move. And the dog will be like, oh, oh my God, what, uh, you know, like you just set off a bomb next to them. And so you got to kind of just be like real low key. There's some dogs I've worked on, I'm like, yes. And all they have to move is like, 12 inches, you know, I'll just waggle the food and they'll be like, okay. And they'll walk over and they'll stop and they'll just tentatively just take it with this little corn cob bite. And then they'll be like, you're not going to kill me. Right. And I'm like, that was wonderful, sweetheart. That was wonderful. And then we just do it until they build confidence and they, you know, then they're toddling over and getting it and then they're running over and getting it. So it takes time. Uh, the other reason that some dogs are resistant to this in early stages are dogs that have constantly, like I said, had all their food and toys pushed at them, right? So they'll do something and then you go, yeah, come get it. And they're like, and that's not how it works, peasant. You'll bring that to me, you know? And I'm like, no, you got to come get it. And they're like, this is some bullshit right here, you know? <laughs> and then you got to like, Sweetheart, listen, this ain't how it works anymore. You, you're going to have to participate and do a little bit of work. Uh, and so those are dogs with low frustration tolerance. You know, sometimes low frustration tolerance is uh, a confidence issue. Sometimes low frustration tolerance is just, you know, a spoiled dog that's never really had to work for anything. And now I'm asking them like, hey, man, you got to be a dog. And they're like, what? What? 
uh, I'm a king, okay? I'm a king. So uh, depending on where that dog is in that spectrum, uh, I have also never encountered a dog that I could not get them to do it to some extent um, over time and build some speed and enthusiasm. Pretty much always. Uh, I, I just, I, you can always do it. It just, you know, the, how long it takes and how enthusiastic they'll get with it. You know, that's genetics, past experience, age, things like that. You know, so like my dog Dexter, he's 13, my bulldog Dexter. Like if I work with him, like he only has to walk this far because it'll take him, you know, 15 seconds to walk that far because he's got arthritis. So I'm just like, bam, get it, buddy. And he's like, okay. Um, so, you know, uh, but yeah, no. Short answer, no. Uh, I've never had a dog. I couldn't get them invested. Very welcome. Uh, Liz, what's the best way to increase Chloe's attention on me when she'd prefer to watch other dogs in a room? She's not food driven and unfortunately isn't reactive to the dogs. Thanks to you. You're welcome. No, thanks to you. You did the work. I just told you what to do. Uh, but when around other dogs, she sometimes lacks the focus she has when on her own. She isn't scared of the dogs, perhaps just heightened awareness. I see other dogs who stare at their humans and seem more focused. Uh, well, so that's a great question. Uh, and this goes back to kind of what I was talking about with the otter sits and the find my face thing is uh, I really prefer to capture these rather than try to induce those things, you know? So that's one of my... My personal reasons I don't teach watch me in my classes. You know, a lot of trainers, one of the first things they teach a dog is watch me. You know, so you see dogs like, you know, like this with the food or they'll do like this thing, you know, with food in each hand and stuff. And those are not bad exercises. It's just for me and my training philosophy and the way that I do things, I prefer to capture those things than to try to induce them. Because I find that if a dog voluntarily interrupts their focus, to re reorient to me, and then I go, bam, I'm going to pay you for that. They're like, whoa. And I mean, you think uh, we do the same thing. You know, if you do something at work and your boss comes by just unexpected and be like, hey, Liz, you know, I saw the thing you did. That was fantastic. Listen, here's a lunch card on me. Great job. Great job. I'm really glad to have you on the team. Like that was totally unexpected. You're like, did that just, that was awesome. Like you are way, way, way so much more strongly reinforced to do that thing again in the future than if you were asked to do it and then somebody just said, thank you, hey, here's a lunch card. Like that would be great, but when it's unexpected and un, you know, kind of un, what's the right word? I think, you know what I'm saying? Like if it's unexpected and you just capture it, at least in my experience and, and, and my research and, and what I've learned, I feel like it's much stronger learning. So I would say really just try to set up your situation so that you are increasing the likelihood that Chloe is gonna do that. You can do some setup work, you can do some auto auto watches or some, you know, find my face work. Auto watches is kind of like auto sits, except what you're looking to capture is just voluntary eye contact. Uh, I almost actually talked about that one today was an auto watch, but um, an auto sit kind of gets an auto watch at the same time. So you can kind of work on some of those things on the back end so that you're creating kind of that scaffolding in the back of her brain and then try to work in situations where uh, you're looking at her threshold, right? So if there's too many dogs in close proximity, it's probably not gonna happen. But if you're in a situation where there's maybe two or three dogs and they're a little ways away, you know, then just kind of sit there and just go like, okay, so A, she's focused on those dogs. I'm gonna do some classical conditioning. I'm gonna pet her rub her shoulders, scratch in front of her ears, scratch her chin. Like, that's a good girl, Chloe. Thank you for thank you for looking at those dogs and not acting like a fool. I love that. I love that. I mean, anytime somebody's complimenting you, you know, you're going to go like that. And if she does that, you go, oh my God, that's fantastic. What a good girl. If she won't take the food, uh, use some other kind of stronger reinforcement. You know, maybe you're going to like step up and that's when she gets a, a scratch in some of her favorite places or you know, uh, a toy or something like that. Um, usually in instances like that where they won't take food, toys are usually pretty good if she'll engage with it, but you'll kind of just have to feel it out a little bit, figure out what levels of, you know, kind of differential reinforcement you can introduce in that. And then, uh, you know, kind of go from there and just capture that attention whenever you can, if you can set it up. Uh, so that's a tough one to work through, you know, setting it up is always a hard one, finding a situation that you can work through.
And uh, let me know how it goes with your engagement, with uh, experimenting with variant energy. Let me know how it ex uh, goes with your auto sits. With If you try find my face, how that goes. Uh, I'd love to hear how that goes with you guys. Uh, you know, drop me a message on Facebook, drop it in the comments here if you're in the replay or just swing back by to kind of let me know how it goes. Um, and uh, hey guys, have a hell of a good week. Uh, I always love our Fridays hanging out together. I hope this was fun and useful for you guys. So stay safe, stay well, keep learning, keep practicing, and uh, we'll see you guys soon.